Bochi State Governor Bala Mohammed has stated that herders take on farm firearms for self-protection. He said because the Fulani man is practicing the tradition of pastoralism, he has been exposed to um, vagaries of the forests. Cattle rustlers who carry guns, you know, kill them and take away their commonwealth, which is the cows. He said, and I quote, he has no option than to carry an AK-47 because the society and the government are not protecting him with, what is his fault? It is the fault of the government and the people. You do not criminalize all of them because in every tribe, there are criminals. He also slammed the Benue State Governor, Samuel Otom, um, saying that what the governor did was wrong. He, um, my brother and colleague, Governor Otom, started all of this. If you don't accommodate other tribes, we're also accommodating your tribes in Balchi and other places. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Shehu Musa Gabam, National Secretary of the SDP, uh, that's the Social Democratic Party, and Dikbo Olayoku, who is a broadcast journalist. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Gabam. What do you think um, of what Mr. Um, what the Balchi State Governor said about carrying firearms and um, you know the herders uh, protecting themselves against rustlers? Um, do you think he was saying that it's okay to carry around unregistered firearms in a country where it is illegal? What are your thoughts on this? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think he was trying to legitimize uh, what happened. But he's trying to define the process, what led to the process. The moment the government failed to carry out its own responsibility to discharge its duty, aligned with the rule of law, obviously people will have to defend themselves. And the biggest victim of cattle wrestling are the Fulani themselves more than any other person. So they know where it pinches. If you go back to the history of America, the cowboys and what have you, they are carrying guns because as of then there was cow wrestling even in the US. The cow, I mean, the but of course, the, 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 constitu so the Constitution, let, let uh, the American me, Constitution allows, the IRA allows for guns to be carried, registered firearms, and there are some states where it's legal. But in Nigeria, that is not what our Constitution allows for, let alone people that's who are I'm, herders. That's, that's what I'm saying. Anybody who carried a gun is illegal unless he is li if he's licensed to carry the gun. And there are guns that are been licensed for hunters or other people to carry. There are not conventional guns used by our security apparatus. But what I'm saying is that nobody has a monopoly of rascality or violence or unmannered or uncultured way of putting things around. If we are not careful, we'll set this country ablaze. There's no way somebody who is elected in a position of responsibility will begin to talk like a street person. I mean, it's a very sensitive issue and nobody wants to be in a situation he loses control of everything. Nigeria belongs to everybody and nobody therefore can just wake up one day as an elected official and decide to give people a quick notice. In this country that we live over 160 or 70 years, people have been living together. I grew up in the village that I live with Igbos and Yorubas. I have never known this difference of dichotomy of this and that, but the political class and the elites and the media are responsible for the kind of situation that we are today in Nigeria because the repertoire process was absolutely faulty and one-sided. Some people are dying absolutely. You will never find a media covering what is going on around them. A few things will happen, and then they will give it an over uh, a headline and cover all sorts of things. But what I'm saying in reality is that it is not right for people to carry out arms without being licensed to carry arms. Okay. But in a situation where anarchy has ensued, people have no other option than to defend themselves. You know, people have to defend themselves. What is happening in Nigeria? Okay, let, 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 let's quickly go to the video. Government, government failed to defend them. Okay, let's quickly go to the video uh, of Governor Autumn, and then we would get the response of uh, the Bauchi State Governor. Let's take a look. If a state of emergency is not declared on security in this country, we may wake up one day and discover that we have no com country. And the worst thing is that most or almost all the Hairsmen who are terrorizing this country, they are not even Nigerians. I have said this several times. Mr. President, 
also admitted this when he visited United Arab Emirates and confirmed that truly those herdsmen with arms are not Nigerians. They are from Chad, they are from Mali, they are from Senegal, they are from other countries. You have seen what our colleagues in the Southwest are doing, and some of them from the Southeast. Some of us told them with all modesty and humility, you are wrong. But the person that is most wrong is the governor of Benue State, my brother and my colleague, Governor Otto. He started all this. If you don't accommodate other tribes, we are also accommodating your tribes in Bauchi and other places. We have so many chief people working in farming in Alkaleri, farming in Tafawa Balewa, farming in Bogoro. Has anybody told them to go? We have not, because they are on in a lineable right to be there. We have Yoruba, Yoruba people in Bauchi for over 150 years. I'm going to come to you now, Mr. Dira. You are a journalist and you cover these stories. And Mr. Gabon has already given you an, a punch of sorts, saying that you know the media covers everything, but not some of those things that the real things that you know happen or transpire in these places. Now you've watched both videos and you've seen, um, you heard the call uh, from Governor Autumn, and you've seen his counterpart's response. What do you think about this? Is that for me? Yes, sir. Oh, oh yes. Um, thank you very much for having me. I, I think Nigeria is passing through a very serious situation. There's tension everywhere. And I think it behoves on every one of us, especially leaders at whatever level, to be circumspect to be very cautious of whatever comes out of their mind, have mouth. We don't want the situation where we already have a small fire and people are adding fuel to it. That is why every Nigerian needs to be very cautious. Having said that, uh, it is very, very unbecoming, especially of our political leaders, when they turn issues every issue into a political matter. That exactly has been exemplified by what we can now call the back and forth between the governor of Benue State and the Bauchi State government. What is the point of contention? The issue of the killer headsmen. Not only killer headsmen, the issue of headsmen that allow their cattle to wander into other people's farms, destroy their sweat and their wealth. So what are we talking about? Like the, the Bauchi State Governor said, that everybody has freedom of movement. But you don't have the freedom of movement to come into my farm and destroy my crops. Do you have that freedom? You see, there is so much uh, ignorance on the part of some of the people, to some of us, that talks about freedom, as if this freedom does not have its own limitation. Whatever freedom you are given to, you are, you are given, has its own limitations. I'd, I'd like so to... if you have freedom of movement, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to cut in. I'm sorry to cut in. The governor of Bauchi State made mention of the fact that people are allowed to live anywhere. And he insisted that no person owns any piece of land. In fact, he did emphasize that um, these cattle can graze, that the, the states shouldn't be saying that they own this land. That he, I mean, I, I'd like to quote him exactly what he said. He said, no one owns any forest. Uh, and so I'm wondering, um, does that mean that the Ondo state government didn't have a right to say that, look, these people cannot graze in government reserves. Uh, is that what he, he meant? Because he's saying that nobody owns any forest, in other words, so these people can you, go where they you, want. You, 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 have, you have even said this. Government is the area. 
<laughs> but this is a, but this is a governor area. of the state who is who is saying that nobody owns any forest, and nobody also means that government is involved because they're also buddies. But I am very happy that he's a governor. He was once a minister, a minister of Africa, and we know how the government and was allocating land to people. So if government doesn't have rights over some land, why are government uh, allocating land? And even in his own state, under the Land Use Act, all lands belong to government. That is why when you buy a land, you have to buy up, apply to the government on the basis of uh, Land Use Act, Decree Act. So well, that's why you have to apply to the government for three or four. So I can now be telling us that uh, all land, uh, every land is free. But it is, it is unfortunate that politics have stepped into it. Hmm. But there's need for us to look at what brought about that thing he talked about. Okay. It's because of what the mini governor of Benway State was saying. You, you see, even if you're operating from the point of right or righteousness, there is need for everybody to be cautious. Because Nigeria is in a very tense situation, and we need to mind whatever comes out of our mind, mouth. All right. What should be the concern of everybody is how do we douse the tension? Okay. How do we make sure that things do not get out of hand? That should be the control concern All right. of let me, everybody. Let me go to not Mr. all this back and forth. Let me go to Shehu Musa Gabam. He, he, Mr. Gabam, you ran for office. If you were the governor in Bauchi State, for example, and this is happening, what would be your position going forward now? Because uh, Mr. Dikwa is saying that, I mean, we have frayed nerves everywhere, and of course, the most important way to go about this is to try to see how we can douse tension instead of talking tough. Um, where do we go from here? How would you have handled this issue if you were a governor in your state? Well, first and foremost, every sound-minded Nigerian and everyone who happened to be elected as a governor of a state is assumed that they have the superiority of way of managing issues, diplomatic issues, and so on and so forth. The first thing any governor ought to have done is to engage in the diplomacy, how to resolve issues around his states, particularly when the constitution allows everybody to decide in any part of the country. You, you don't just jump up and begin to utter a statement that are, that, that are very dangerous to the peace of the states. Because look, like I mentioned, I believe during June 12, I was in Lagos. I've seen how people started migrating because of some reckless statement from some governors and so on and so forth. Some of the biggest tragedy that we are facing today, we have governors who do not connect their head. They only speak from their lips. And therefore they talk anyhow recklessly and so on and so forth. If I'm the governor of the state and I happen to have this crisis, the first thing I should do is to bring everybody that matters together Let's discuss these issues. Let's marshal out the issues. Let's see how we can contain the issues. But I don't have any right to okay. issue a notice to a particular tribe who perhaps at that particular time did something wrong. And for me to generalize the whole tribe and say they are bad. You know, look, kidnapping do not okay. start in the north. Armed robberies do not start in northern Nigeria. And so on okay. and so forth. So the, the Igbos, the Yorubas have lived in Nigeria for over 200 years. Okay. There was no particular time such thing happened. So leadership it required one to be above board. Like what people have said, we should always use our brain in managing issues. Right. The nerves are quite very, very, very high. We okay. must develop a capacity to allow people to ventilate in a we, diplomatic channel. But want, not the governor to be reckless to, as, as if right. every freedom is limited. We That's want, what people said, and I stand by that. Every freedom is limited. So the governor doesn't thank have you. unlimited freedom to give people a quick notice. Thank you very much. I want to thank you, um, Mr. Shehu Musa Gabam. You are the National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. And Dikwa Olayaku, thank you very much. You're a journalist. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Uh, we are out of thank time. Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, I will give you my take. Stay with us. I believe the youth can stand firm on their grounds, go for the protests, so that at least there will be justice for the people who lay down their life. 
Um, I do think the protest should hold because, I mean, we, the issues they're actually bringing up, I mean, there are people who actually fought for this uh, toll gate and you are thinking of bringing it back up again. The people who died, they haven't even caught the soldiers, they haven't caught those so-called um, hoodlums that shot those people and you are bringing them back again, you are bringing, opening toll gates back again is very, very wrong. I think uh, the timing is, uh, is not nice, the timing is wrong, you know, looking at what is going on. Tension everywhere, uncertainties, economic, you know, breakdown, everything, hardship everywhere. Then on protests on this hardship again, it will not be okay for Nigeria, you know. We are just uh, coming out from uh, lockdown. We are going back to lockdown again. I think we should find a way of settling things. For me in person, I would say we should come out and speak. At the same time, I'm considering the market women, those who are sick, who will be going to the hospital, who will need medical attention and all of that. So if you block the road, if the road is being blocked, there's no way these persons can get um, that medical attention. So that's just my only um, worry about this protest. But for me, I think the protest is very, very good and the youth should come out and speak up. Here's my take. Today's world is a post-truth world where we have found ourselves, where black can be called white because it suits a particular narrative that we support. A world where we allow for abnormal and illegal things to happen and look the other way because it serves a political party or a government's purpose. We have lost all sense of morality. We have argued and downplayed truth to nothingness. The voice of the people have been lost, gag orders here and there, citizens unable to speak up for justice and fair play. We have allowed sentiments to take the place of wisdom, and we are scared to say it as it is. But how long will this continue? Will we keep acting like nothing is wrong here? Lootings, killings, nepotism, corruption, and yet we can't protest or speak against it. Where do we go from here, Nigeria? Well. I am Mary Anna Cohn, thanking you for watching.